Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good to have you with us tonight. Amen. Sister Tracy, Deke. Praise the name of the Lord. Sister Walker, good to have you. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. We'll wait for a few more to come online. We greet you in that wonderful name of Jesus, the Christ. We thank the Lord for his goodness and his mercy toward us. We thank him for keeping us, and we're praying for those who are continually going through these challenges today with the virus and everything else that's happening in our society, in our world, in our country. But we thank the Lord. We know God is still on the throne. Amen. He's still on the throne. He's still in charge. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. Good to have all of you here tonight in the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes, yes. We say thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I tell you, amen. All right, all right. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Good to have you with us. In the name of the Lord. Well, let's pray in the name of God. We believe in the Lord. Amen. I heard some good news today how God is just raising up, amen, individuals out of Amen. The virus. Amen. That was in intensive care, um, on a ventilator. But now I heard some good news today. Amen. And Sister Pingley, praise the name of the Lord. That's our Sister Ruth mother. Praise the name of the Lord that God uh, is blessing her. And if she continue to increase, uh, God continue to bless her, she'll be able to come home in three to five days. So we thank the Lord for that. Amen. I remember others. I have not heard from them, but we continue to pray for them in the name of and for the families in the name of the Lord. Many have lost their families during this time, family members. And so we thank God. He's still a keeper. He's still God on the throne. Amen. He's still God on the throne. No matter what we're going through, amen. We got to be, amen, steadfast. Amen. You got to develop this enduring spirit because this is the year of prayer, restoration, and empowerment. So let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We bless you tonight. We thank you for those who are watching and those who are coming on as we go forward in the word of God. It's not I, but it's the Christ. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for your compassionate love. Thank you for your keeping power and your healing hand. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. Glory. That was shared on Calvary for us. We thank you right now. Thank you, Lord, because you're still a miracle working God. And God, I believe tonight somebody need a crazy blessing, a blessing they, they just can't explain it. Hallelujah. We know have, we have nothing to do with it. It had to be all you. We thank you right now. In the name of Jesus to Christ, we pray. Amen. All right. Listen, tonight I want to deal with two Two passages of scripture. I'm going to talk about one, but I'm going to uh, read from the other. And that is Psalm 34 and verse 1. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. David says this. He says, I will bless the Lord, what? At all times. He says, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. And my soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The homeless shall hear thereof and be glad. He said, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were enlightened and their faces were not ashamed. He said, this poor man cried. And the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his trouble. And the angel of the Lord encamped around about them that fear him and deliver them. And the eighth verse, he said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. So as we look at the text tonight, I want you to get that in doing praise. That praise that will speak that you would just, I mean, you praise him regardless of what you're going through. Praise the Lord. You got to have a made of mind that God, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your name because it's you. In you we live, in you we move, 
and in you we have our being. Because sometimes you have to understand that this flesh man and the spirit man going at it. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why you got to feed this spirit man. You got to strengthen. Amen. So you can keep this flesh man under subjection. Praise the name of the Lord. Because if not, the colonists of him will, will rise up and you'll find yourself struggling with this walk. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, David write this song in the midst of something. That's that's when I went back and looked at it, it just it stunned me. It just uh, not that I hadn't seen it before, but when I went back and looked at it again, it just opened my heart. I want to share. Uh, he's anointed king. He uh, as a young boy, he's anointed king, and he's and and he he has dealt with. Uh, some things after he was anointed, he goes back to keeping his father's sheep. And, and now God allows an enemy to get stirred up against the nation of Israel, the Philistine. Now, the problem is uh, David now has the anointing. King Saul has the position. And sometimes we look to people in position instead of look for folk who has an anointing. And we have to start, and God is challenging us to look for the Spirit of God, His anointing, praise the name of the Lord, that discerning Spirit. Praise the Lord, because sometimes we get caught up in what we see in the name of the Lord, but God is not moved by the outward appearance of us. He's moved by the heart. That's what Samuel had to discover when he anointed David. But after David had killed Goliath, when the battle started, out, and I'm just fast-forwarding it, the battle started it, and God uh, touched David's father's heart to want to send some things to his brethren that was at war, uh, along with King Saul and the rest of the army. And when David got there, they were hiding. And out come this great big giant. And sometimes, sometimes you find yourself fighting giant situations, giant circumstances. And you say, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. But you got to remember that the anointing of God is what works. Praise the name of that God works through his power. He works through his anointing. Amen. And so not through our intellect. Praise the name of the Lord. And sometimes we think because we can quote some Bible verses, and stuff, which is all right. We should. We should do all those things. Praise the name of the Lord. But it's the power of God that's to do the enemy. That's his anointing. Praise the name of God. And so... Uh, when David hear him defile the name of God, he rises, something rise up in him. And so when David slew Goliath, praise the name of the Lord, and he, and when he gets back, we know how he cuts off his head, take his sword, and we go through, I'm not going through all that. But what happens is they sung the song. And when they sung the song, Saul slew his thousand, but David slew his ten thousand. Man, that flesh man rose up in Saul. That that demonic spirit rose up in him like never before. Praise the name of the Lord. That jealousy spirit, that hateful spirit. All of a sudden, here's a young man that just saved you in battle. Praise the name of the Lord. And now you turn on him. So now David now has to run for his life. Now he's running for his life from Saul through many things. But when you get to 1 Samuel 21, verse 15, you find out that David runs into Gad. Now Gad is the place where Goliath came from because Saul now has dominion over that region. Praise the name of, of the Philistines. So now David is running from Saul. His life is being run from Saul, but God is characterizing him. God is building him. And sometimes some of the things that you think is hurting you is not hurting you. He's building you. He's strengthening you. He's, he's developing you. He's getting ready, amen, praise the name of the Lord, so you can walk in, amen, into that, to that call and that purpose of God that he's anointed you for. And so, but here's, here's the thing. He's running from Saul, but he ends up in the city of Gad with the Philistines. Now, when he gets there, one of the servants recognize who he is. And he goes to the king and said, isn't this David? Now, you got to remember now, they remembered how he slew Goliath. This, this, is, this is the guy that slew our champion. Praise the name of the Lord. This is the guy, that's how they're seeing it. This is the guy that defeated our champion. 
So David now is in, now he's in, he's in, he's in a crutch because he got Saul chasing him. And now he's got the, he's in the, he's in the camp of the Philistines who dislikes him. You got one chasing, one envy, one out to destroy you, and one already against you. And he's caught right there. And sometimes that's the way life is. It looked like, God, I know I, I know you anointed me. I know you saved me. I know you blessed me. I know you've given me victories. But there are times I feel like I'm just caught in between. We call it a rock in a hard place sometimes. <clears throat> but David now does something very unique. Praise the name of the Lord. He does something very unique. The Bible, the scripture says that David begins to act like a madman. Begin to scratch on the, the gates and let, he, let slobber run down his beard. And, and the king says, you bring this, this insane man in here to me? You bring this, this insane man? This is the man that we let defeat our champion? This is, get this crazy man out of here. It's crazy. Get him away from me. And so they drove David out of Gad, and he ends up in the, in the cave of Adullam. But this is where, when David was there, he writes the song. I've got Saul on one side, i got the Philistines on the other. But then he writes, I will. <laughs> I will bless the Lord at all times, regardless of the situation. I'm being threatened. By my own countrymen, I'm being hated by the ones that I defeated, but I still gonna bless God. Sometimes that's the way it is. Sometimes in life, when you, there's an anointing on you, you got to know, Hallelujah, that God is not finished. You got to know that God is bringing you to a place, and He ends up in the cave of Adullam. But He writes the song, "I will bless the Lord at all times." Then he says, hallelujah, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't sing out loud, but he's writing it. He, he's speaking it in his spirit. He's speaking it in his heart. He's, he's just magnifying God inside of him. God, you still, I know you're my deliverer. I'm still going to praise you. I got Saul on my track. I got the Philistines. Who, who, God, Lord, talking about getting rid of me. Get, get, I'm mad. I'm, I'm insane. That glory, they don't like me. Praise, praise the Lord. But God, I'm going to bless you because it was you who brought me this far. It was you who kept me. And he keeps writing. He said, my soul, not my flesh. He said, my soul. <laughs> he said, my soul, glory, glory to God, will make a boast in the Lord. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going to brag on how good God is in spite of the pressures from the outside, in spite of the pressure on the outside. And that's the key. The issue is we can't let the pressure from outside dictate what goes on on the inside. Glory to God. We got to know how to keep praising God in spite of the pressures of life, the challenges that we're facing, the difficulties that we're looking at. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. And David said, my soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The homer shall hear the other and be glad. And then he said something profound. He said, you know, when the homer hear the other, those who really understand what I'm going through, praise the Lord. They, and some you got to understand that God has others who are going through, amen, their experiences. They may not be your experiences, but they can still say, you know what, I'm going to bless God. Glory to God. I got issues on the right, on the left. I got issues on the right. I got issues behind me. I got issues in front of me. But I'm still going to bless God. Praise the name of the Lord. I refuse to let the outside influences dictate what goes on on the inside. I got to endure hardness as a good soldier. I made up my mind. I settled in my mind. Do one that David writes later. And my heart is fixed. My heart is fixed, oh God. My heart is fixed. And that's the way it is. You got to fix your heart. That God, I'm going to bless you regardless of what's going on. It may be crazy all around me. Things can be crazy. Money can be crazy. Folks can be crazy. Situations can be crazy. But inside, 
There's a peace of God that passes all understanding that keeps your heart and minds pure. So I bless the Lord down in my soul. I keep blessing him. I keep praising him. Glory to God. So when I looked at this, I said, Lord, Lord, here's a man that made a, a commitment. He endured. He, he was determined to, to walk in your empowerment. He was determined to walk in this anointing. And that's the way we got to be. We got to be determined to walk in it. So, Lord, we got to be determined, amen, to walk in this, this, this restoration and power of God that he's given to us. Be determined. He goes on to say this. He said, I sought the Lord. He said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. That's what he said first. He said, that's what he said. I magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name, what? Together. Glory to God. Now, now. He's in this cave. Remember, he's ran from Saul. He's been driven out by the Philistines. He's in the cave of Adunia. Now, something unique's happened. His father, his mother, and his brethren comes to him in a cave. And remember now, when he was anointed king, his father had seven sons. He had, he had a nice, you know, probably a nice spread, as we would call it. In our day, he had, he had some stuff going on in our day. He was doing pretty good. But when Saul turned on David, he turned on the whole family. Praise the name of the Lord. So now they're, they're trying to escape Saul. Praise the name of the Lord. And yet he's, he's dealing with Saul. He's dealing with the Philistines. And now his family comes to him. Glory to God. <laughs> they're scared. They're afraid. But there comes to the one that they remembered that the anointing is on. Why? Because God had to reveal it to them. See, sometimes we're trying to prove the folk we're anointed. All we got to do is just walk with God. Glory to God. And God will reveal that anointing. Hallelujah. And, and then, then something unique happened. After his brethren came, there were 400 soldiers was upset with Saul. And came to be with David and said, hey, we want, we want to follow you. We want you to be the head. All of a sudden, he goes from here to here to a cave by himself in a with a family plus 400. Now he's got responsibility. He ain't got The only thing he can offer them is the anointing. And see, so he said, I'll bless God. See, God know how to send help. When you think there ain't no help. God know how to encourage you when you think there is no encouragement. You'd be surprised who God has praying for you. You'd be surprised who the Lord has lifting your name up before him. You'd be surprised who's interceding for you. You'd be surprised who God will send your way. Praise the name of the Lord. And just sow a seed in your life unexpectedly. Praise the name of God. That's why we got to keep blessing the Lord. God is in charge. In the name of God. Look at Psalm 103. Praise the name of God. Another song of death. He said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And he said, and all that within me. Ooh, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. He said, and all that within me. Man. <coughs> Not just, now he's talking about all the glory of God in him. Because in his mind, he still got to deal with all that other stuff. He still got to deal with all that other mess. That he had to deal with in his life. God, I know I've been anointed. I know you're anointing me. I know I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. I know. I know I've been baptized in your name. I know. I know you delivered my soul. And yet I find myself in these situations. Because he's building us. He's getting us ready. He's getting you ready for something greater. He's getting you ready for something unique. He's getting you ready. Get ready to walk into a new season. Get ready to walk into something greater. Get ready. Glory to God. Get ready. So he said, listen what he said. He said, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that within me, bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Forget not all his benefits. He said, I can't forget the benefits of God. When I think about all the benefits, the provision of God, the, the, the deliverance of God, the restoration of God. The empowerment of God. Oh, and how God just worked through me. Too. One of Paul writes, being confident 
of this one thing. He that which have begun a good work in you shall perform it. It's crying. Then he rolls on to say, God that worketh in us to will and to do of his good pleasure. Glory to God. See, one day when he writes in Corinthians, he says, our sufficiency is not of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. It's God's, God's power, God's anointing. Glory to God. That's what sustains you. That's what keeps you going. That's what keeps you brave. That's what keeps you moving. That's, that's, that's your victory cry. Glory to God. And through that anointing, he brings us into places. He brings us. And he's moving. He's on in your footsteps. Glory to God. So he says this. Who forgiven all thine iniquities? Because <laughs> we all sin and short, come short of the glory of God. We all done done wrong. Now, eh? and, <laughs> one Bible said, there's not a man, one scripture said, there's not a man who hasn't sinned. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. And you sit there acting like we ain't never done nothing wrong. We never thought nothing wrong. Glory to God. So get over this whole and thou attitude and recognize that it's God that's working in us. It's not something you earn. That's what David, that's why David was blessing the Lord so. You realize he didn't earn this. He was keeping sheep. He was minding his own business. He, he wasn't thinking about being no king. Praise the name of the Lord. And God has brought many of us and brought you out of situations because he's had a purpose on your life. God did the choosing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You didn't choose God. God chose you. Praise In him before the foundation of the world, he already predestinated certain things. But those who will believe in me, I, pre I got predestination for them. I put a plan in place. And there's a plan for your life. There's a plan God has. There's a plan. And sometimes you got to follow the plan. You got to follow God because he, he doesn't always show you. He doesn't always show you every step. He just give you a promise of what he's going to do. And then he said, follow me. Glory to God. But while you're following, you run into, you run into all kinds of things. But that's what keeps you going, that anointing. That praise. Keep your praise going. Who healed all thy disease. All thy disease. And sometimes the disease ain't physical. Sometimes the disease is, is my low self-esteem. Sometimes that disease is I can't make it. That disease of fighting unbelief and fear and doubt and, and being double-minded. See, so he heals all that because he knows you're going to deal with it. But it does not stop. You got to understand this principle. Understand this principle. When you come in a relationship with Jesus Christ, and you find yourself struggling in this relationship. And you find yourself doing some things you, you, you said, God, oh, God, I don't know why I did that. Now, what happens is, if, if, if we don't confess that, confess that sin, it doesn't destroy the relationship. Because, see, the relationship wasn't based, it didn't come because of you, it came because of God. But in the relationship, he wants us to constantly be before him. Why? Because it's developed fellowship. Because two can't walk together unless they agree. And what the Bible teaches us in 1 John chapter 1, praise the name of the Lord, we have fellowship one with another. When we walk in the word, when we walk in the light, when we walk in the things of God, we have fellowship with one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Why? Because we keep walking. We keep walking. See, God understands. He already know your path. He already know the failures. He already see. He knows the, 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 the beginning from the end from the beginning. He already know. And everything that's going to happen in between. One writer said he's a God of knowledge. I think Hannah said it. When she was praying in, in first, first Samuel chapter 2. God's a God of knowledge. He, he knows it all. He is knowledge. Nothing that we face catch God by surprise. That's why when Paul writes in, I think, um, 1 Timothy, 
uh, no, not First Timothy, First Corinthians, chapter ten. Praise the name of the Lord, and and verse uh, thirteen. Okay, this is what it said: There has no temptation taken you, but such as common to man. But God is faithful. God is faithful. No matter what you, no matter what comes again, He's still faithful. Praise the name of the Lord. He's a faithful God. Because whatever God has already started, he's going to finish it. Praise the name of the Lord. And you ain't going nowhere that God finished what he promised he's going to do in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. David went through a lot of stuff, but he still ended up on the throne. He made a lot of mistakes on the way, but he still ended up on the throne. Praise the name of the Lord. And I've come to this conclusion when I when I look at what God is doing in our lives today in the midst of the virus and the midst of what we're going through and, and all the things that we're dealing with. And I'm like, Lord, but he reminds me of the anointing that he's placed on the body of Christ, the anointing that he placed on the church and in the heart of the believer over the come. Because we have this anointing, it has to come to has to come to pass. Because God is not a man that he should lie. A son of man he should repent. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. His word will not return to him void. He can accomplish in the things where he be sent him. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. And David now finds himself. Now he's got to figure out how to protect mom dad, brothers. He got, he got to figure out how to protect his family. He's got to figure all this out now. And yet, he's heading to the throne. But he's still got to deal with Saul and all the allies of Saul. He, and see, that's what the adversary does. If he can't get you one way, he come at you another. If he can't get you to doubt one way, he come at you another. If one challenge don't stop you, he sends another challenge. No matter what it is, it's always something coming at you all the time. Why? Because God knows they're coming, but he's using those challenges to build you. He's using those challenges to strengthen you. He's using those challenges to, to bring you to that place. The, the, the scripture said, one scripture said, I'm bringing you to a wealthy place. Glory to God. One songwriter said, he broadened my footsteps. David said, my feet almost slipped. Glory to God. I don't know about you. <laughs> I've been on the edge a lot of times. Glory to God. Glory to God. But God kept us. God kept us. That's why we got to praise him. That's why we got to bless him. Because he's building you. He's building you. He's building you. He knew how to keep sheep. He knew how to fight. Now he's got to know how to deal with people that are hurting. He's got, he, 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 now he's got to learn. He's got to learn how to deal with folk who don't like it. He's got to know how to pray. That's why Jesus said, pray for those who despitefully use you. That's why you're going through what you're going through. The, the situations are there not to destroy you, but the situation is there so God can reveal to you more of himself. Glory to God. Let me, uh, uh, he said, he redeemed my life from destruction, who crowned me with love and kindness and tender mercy. Uh, I, I want to go, I want to go to uh, Matthew 11. Matthew 11, I'm going to show you something. Matthew 11. We, we read verse 28, 29, 30 all the time. But verse 27 says something powerful. Man, it's powerful. And, and I want to go there. This is what it says. All things are delivered unto me and my father, Jesus said. He said, all things. Jesus said, all things are delivered unto me. And no man neither knoweth, uh, and no man knoweth the son but the father. Neither knoweth any man the father save the son. He said, no man know. They just know each other. But then he turned around and said, he and he to whomsoever the son will reveal himself. So anything you know is because he revealed it. But he created situations, he let situa situations and circumstances come. So he's revealing himself more and more to us. 
So he's building you. He's building you for what he promised you. He's building you to bring forth what he said. Because he said all things work together for the good to them who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. When you know there's a purpose on your life and there's an anointing on your life, praise the name of the Lord. And sometimes you're in a situation you can't explain. You're in a fighting situation, you, you don't even you ain't got a clue how to deal with it. You just know that God is God. Somehow or another, he's going to make a way somehow. That's why you keep your praise up. That's why you keep on praising him. That's why you keep your praying down in your soul. Your life become a praise. Why? Because I'm walking in the things of God. I'm, I'm, I'm meditating on the things of God. I'm living the things of God. I'm just declaring the things of God. I'm speaking the word of life. I'm just, I'm glory to God. I'm not walking around with a big sign or screaming and hollering. Praise the name of the Lord. God deals with your spirit. He don't deal with your outer man. He deals with that spirit man. And he's challenging us. He's challenging every man, every woman, every person, every boy, every girl. He's challenging us to know him. To know him. And you won't know him. You won't know him like that in the flesh. That's why Paul said, I pray that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know the hope of the calling set before us. I pray that you be strengthened with Almighty in your inner man. It's in the inner man. It's in your spirit man that God wants to reveal. Glory to God. And uh, I'm going to say this to somebody who's listening. Before you make that next choice, seek God. Don't go by what you see. If you go by what you see, you might end up with a whole bunch of mess for years to come. But if you wait on the Lord, and they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. Glory to God. Wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait, I tell you, on the Lord. Be of good courage. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Seek him. Amos said in Amos 5 and 4. Hear me, O Israel. I can say, hear me, O church. God says, seek me, and you shall live. He wants us to seek him. Seek him. David didn't seek the kingdom. He was running for his life. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. He wasn't seeking to be, be no king. He was just doing his job. Doing what he was told to do. And sometimes you got to just be about the business of the Lord and the anointing of God will take care of it. But you got to understand the anointing brings challenges. Because the adversary ain't just going to sit by and let you waltz into your ministry. He ain't going to sit by and let you just waltz into your corner. He ain't going to sit by and let you fulfill the purpose of God. He ain't going to sit by and let you just go through restoration and be walking in empowerment. No, that's not going to happen. You will have to deal with some challenges. But you got to make up in your mind, no matter what comes, on my left, on my right, what's behind me, because I can't look back. I'm not looking back. One time I look back is when I start thinking about remembering what, all the benefits of God. Then I look back and say, yeah, you know what? I remember he's my provider. I remember he's my healer. I remember, glory to God, he's my protector. I remember he's my banner. I remember he's my righteousness. I remember, I remember, I remember. And you keep remembering, praise the Lord, but you don't look back to go back. We must press forward. And I want to encourage you in the midst of this trials, in the midst of what we're dealing with. And as we continue to pray for those who continue to walk upright before the Lord, who continue to just seek the face of God. David knew he, he knew. God, I, I know you anointed me, but why I'm going through what I'm going through? Because I'm building you. <laughs> I'm building you for a purpose. Because if I put you in the kingdom seat right now, you can't handle it. You ain't ready for the blessing. So I got to get you ready for the purpose. That's why I anointed you. I anointed you for a purpose. So I'm getting you ready for the purpose. So don't panic, saints, because of what we're going through. Don't panic. We just got to use some wisdom and use some understanding. And believe God and keep our praise, keep our worship down in your soul. Stay before him. Keep praising him. Keep worshiping him. Keep looking to him. So when he said, I lift my eyes to the hills, 
He's not talking about that physical heal. He's talking about God. I, I, I need to look to something higher than I. Glory to God. Glory to God. Way above man. Because what God has taken us through, man can't do. bring me out of this. It takes God to deliver us. It takes God to bring us back. And he's he's going to work, work in our day. Even if we declare, we won't even believe it. So I encourage you. It's a new season. It's a new day coming our way. But you got to hang in there. Let him keep building you. Remember, you've been anointed for this purpose. You've been anointed to work in ministry. You've been anointed to do the work of the kingdom. You've been anointed to go forward. You've been anointed to declare. You've been anointed to live righteous. You've been anointed for this holiness. You've been anointed for the work. You've been anointed to give praise. You've been anointed to give him glory. He's, he, he, just wanted, he just wanted to be glorified. And he's anointed each of us to go through this. David's task was to become kingdom. It was to become king in a kingdom. That was God's purpose. Remember, God said, I search for a man after my own heart. He didn't say a man search for me. <laughs> Ooh, you get that. <laughs> Glory to God. All we got to do is work on, work on our hearts. God, just purify my heart. Build me. And I promise you, I've seen God work many miracles. I've seen God work many things out. And I know there's more to come. What we have to do is be faithful, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So I encourage you, don't lose heart. Keep blessing the Lord. Keep blessing him. Bless him not in your soul. If you keep reading Psalm 34, if you keep reading, and I mean just so much in the psalm when he writes it, that I'm looking at what he's dealing with, and yet you write the psalm. And you got people coming to you broken and hurt and messed up, and yet you have nothing physical to give them, but all you have is an anointing. That's all you have. And yet you still walk forward. And God increases your strength. But then he says something profound. In verse 19, he said, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But he says, But the Lord delivered him out of them all. Many, he says, are the afflictions. The Lord that him out of them all. And I'm going to close tonight with this scripture that God gave Peter to give to the church in 1 Peter 5 and 10. Because I want to remind you of something. But the God of all grace, the one who's able to meet every need. Then he said, who has called us into an eternal glory by Christ Jesus? Your salvation is eternal. Your redemption is eternal. God didn't save you just for the moment. He saved you for eternity. Hallelujah. Wait on it. Be patient. Do one of Luke said in Luke 21. In your patience, possess you your soul. Oh, it. Then he says this. He said, after that, you have suffered a while. You're going through what you're going through. Oh, he make you perfect. The word perfect means complete. Make us all he wants us to be. Let him make you. Hurt sometimes. But I guess you can feel when, when God is making you. You can feel it sometimes. Glory to God. But keep trusting him. Keep praising him. Then he say, establish him. He make us study and dependable. Why? Because he's study and dependable. He's faithful. He's eternal. He meets every need. He's already been through what you're going through. He can feel your drive. Glory to God. 
Then he said this, strength. <laughs> Not our strength, but his strength. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. He strengthened us. He works in us to will and to do of his good pleasure. But then he says, settle. He said, get you to the place where you got to settle out. Where you're not tossed to and fro with every little thing. Amen. You're not moved about with every little thing, every trial come at you. You settle. I know the Lord. He's my God. I know the Lord. I glorify him because I know the Lord going to make a way. He's going to bring me into a wealthy place. He's going to bring me to that place that he's anointed me for. Make us firm in the face of difficulties because he's firm. He's, he's transforming us into the image of his son from glory to glory. <laughs> so let the anointing do what the anointing do. What we have to do is just say, yes, Lord. It's you who's working. Yes, Lord. I don't understand it, but I still bless you. God bless you tonight. I hope I encourage you to keep walking with God, keep seeking the Lord, keep praying. Keep going after restoration. Keep going after empowerment. This is our year. And I know the Lord's going to bring us together. I know he will. Praise the name. I just believe it in my spirit. Glory to God. I seek him. Because he says, seek me. And ye shall live. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So seek him with all your heart. He's there. He's right there. He's not far. He's right there. What he's saying is turn your consciousness to me. <laughs> Glory to God. God bless you. Touch us up on Facebook. We'd be glad to chat with you. Amen. If you have not downloaded our, our, our app, please, please feel free to download our app at any time. And on that app, they got prayer requests. We check it, fill it out. We'll be glad to pray with you, get back with you. Amen. You can just send it to us on Facebook. In the name of the Lord, glory to God. I just believe the Lord. I believe God. This is our year of empowerment, restoration, prayer. I believe that. I believe that with all my heart. I see God restoring. I see God empowering. And I see the anointing on many of your lives. I've seen it. But you have to understand. You have to understand. It's the anointing that you got to get through this way. Because you can't do it. Not in the flesh. It's God that's going to do it. Because he's already anointed you for the purpose. He's just building you. So let him build you. Tell God, build me, Lord. Build me. Search me build me, then I'll be fulfilled that purpose, the calling. But Jesus said, I finished the work, Father, that you told me to do. And I just want to finish. I want to finish. The song said, finish strong. So let's finish strong this year. In the name of the Lord, God bless you. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray. Pray for all the saints, all the seniors, all those who are sick and shut in, in the hospital. We pray for all your people everywhere. We pray for them, God. That you continue to lift them up. Keep working miracles. Keep showing yourself strong. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous can run into it and they say, and I thank you for it right now. In the name of Jesus, to Christ we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. If this has been a blessing to you, please let us know. Amen. Because we just want to keep encouraging you. Keep walking with God. This is our year. I believe God is going to restore the body. He's going to empower us to go forward and do greater works than we ever can imagine. In Jesus' name, God bless you.